and welcome to another exciting episode of Can It Take a K-26? The show where we take a variety of blasters and see if they can be upgraded using a K-26 spring. I am your host, Captain Xavier, and today we're finally going to be looking at the new Rival Edge line. Starting, of course, with the Mercury XIX 500. So named, of course, because it was released in 2019 and holds five rounds. So the Rival Edge, I don't know what, it, what they're really claiming, if they're, apparently they're, they're more accurate than the old ones. I think they're just green. Also, they've switched to naming them after Roman deities rather than Greek deities, supposedly to, I don't know, thumb their nose at uh, out of darts. They'll probably switch to Norse ones when they run out of Roman deities to thumb their nose at me, and that would be very fair. Let's get this thing open and uh, take a look. Well, it comes with a blaster and a target. That's neat. I will, that is genuinely neat. I will probably use these uh, in my uh, my shooting range. Uh, somebody gave me one recently and now I guess I'll have three. If you have these and you don't want them, be uh, feel free to send them my way because they will actually work really, really well uh, on my shooting range. Anyway, let's get to the blaster. Got a bag on it. That was weird. All right, well, first thing, the handle is big. I mean, it, it, it feels large in my hands and I have large hands. Um, that is odd because as far as I know, there's nothing in there. It's weird, weird. Seems they've stopped doling out uh, team indicators. And these rounds seem slightly green as well. They're definitely not yellow. I wonder if there's any difference in their construction. I kind of doubt it. And then there's a priming handle. Now this is something I do not understand. I cannot imagine why they decided to go with a side pride handle instead of a top prime slide. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. I imagine it'll only be a matter of time until somebody designs a 3D printed thing that slides on this rail and gives it um, a proper Prime. That is just weird. It is, however, ambidextrous, so at least they've got that going for them. What concerns me is that that asymmetrical, you know, uh, offset prime is going to be a problem if we increase the spring load, because you can already see it kind of torques stuff, but uh, it loads normally. It doesn't have a jam door like the Kronos did, so that at least is in its favor. Give me the thing. Give me the thing. Give it to me. That is just unnecessary. Okay, let's uh, let's put a few rounds through it. and see if we're getting the numbers that they boast, as far as FPS at least. All right, we'll start with getting the FPS from my handy dandy chronograph here. 99, 96, 95, 93, 95. So yeah, it, it's getting what they're claiming it'll get. Let's go look at accuracy. All right, well, the big claim of the rival line is accuracy. So I've set up the two targets that they provided at 25 feet and 50 feet, because as I say, if you can hit a man-sized target at 50 feet, that is a good blaster for a, a war primary. And if you can um, hit a man-sized target at 25 feet, that's a perfectly acceptable blaster for HVZ. These are obviously both considerably smaller than a man-sized target, but the claim was accuracy. So let's see if I can hit anything at 25 feet. There's one. Well, one and all of the rest were pretty close, so let's go gather the darts and try it at 25 or 50. I'm not, I'm not hopeful. All right, here we go at 50. Nope, most of them kind of 
barely felt like they even went that far. I am not impressed. Now that's all well and good, of course, but what we really want to know is, can it take a K-26? So, let's bust it open and find out. All right, well, we're in, and, uh, well, it's a Kronos in here. There's no surprise there. It's, it's really just a Kronos reshell, which, of course, is a jolt reshell, which of course is a triple torch reshell. Memes are creative. All right, so that that's a beefy spring. We're gonna start with K26 of the same length. Um, it will fit over it, so that's not a problem. It's actually a larger diameter. It's more the diameter of K25, so there's some stuff you might be able to use this for that you wouldn't be able to use K26 for. So that's handy. So we'll start, like I said, with one of the same size. We'll just cut it to be the same length. And if that turns out to be a problem, well, then we'll cut it down. There we go. Okay. Now it catches. Now we're going to put it all back together and hope... that it will prime, because that offset prime makes me nervous. I'm also nervous of the fact that to get this in, I need to have it primed. And I don't want to accidentally release it, because that would be bad. Okay, let's button it up and see what happens. But first, a word from our sponsor. Lettuce. I, I, uh... Moment of truth. Well, it caught. Put a dart in it. Turn around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it can. It makes for a mean prime, and I would be worried about that priming handle over time. It is screwed in, and there's metal involved. But you gotta mean it until somebody comes up with a better prime, like a a rear prime that hooks to both of them, or a top prime that hooks to both sides. Um, it will. All right, let's uh, let's get the numbers. All right, now the Mercury with K26. Let's see what kind of numbers we get now. 131, 128, 130, 129, 131. Yeah. That'll do. Test the accuracy. Now for K26 at 25 feet. It'll be interesting to see how the increased velocity affects the accuracy. Negatively, it would seem. They're fairly accurate right up to the 25 foot point and then they seem to veer. All right, let's go gather ammo and try for 50. Train! I can see it. It's right there. Shipping containers. Hundreds of them. All right, we're gonna try the K26 at 50 feet and see if I get anywhere close. No. Laughably no. That's the closest. It only missed by three feet. <laughs> oh, hey, that one went straight. What a fluke. All right, I'm going to go try to find my ammo, and then we'll talk about this. All right, so that is a decided yes. We had a decent FPS increase going from the around in the 90s to the 130s, so somewhere between a 40 and a 45% increase. That is not insubstantial. Accuracy, of course, suffered because we know that when you increase the um, FPS on rival, they tend to have issues after a certain range as a result of the hop-up. I will eventually do a video where I experiment with 
less hop up in higher FPS blasters and see what that does. I imagine it would cut down on the range, but it might increase the accuracy. So I'll probably try that with a whole bunch of uh, Chronoses and uh, at different um, amounts of hop up with different amounts of um, FPS. So look, we'll look into that. I really like the shell of this one. It's uh, the, the, the grip I thought was big, but it's starting to grow on me. Uh, I know they were going for that precision pistol, precision firearms look that tend to have big blocky grips. Uh, but I like the, the svelte nature of it. It's, it's less blocky than the, the Kronos, which is all very angular, very straight angles. And this one is a little more, you know, space gun look. I like that. I imagine they will paint up really, really nicely. And you could do LEDs in here and it would actually look really, really cool. So there's that one. Let's take a look at the next contestant after these messages. All of the K26 used on this series was donated by Out of Darts. Check out his new website at outofdarts.com for all your nerf modding needs. Our next contestant is, of course, the Jupiter XIX-1000. Uh, the Jupiter was also released in 2019, thus the Roman numerals for 19, and holds 10 rounds, thus the 1000, because they multiply their capacities by 100 to make them sound cooler, I assume. Uh, which it does. Uh, and yeah, it's obviously meant to be a sniper rifle type deal, bipod, target, all sorts of neat features. Let's get this thing opened and take a look. All right, well, the first thing you'll notice is that the target is decidedly fancier. This one rings when you hit it, which is really cool. I would love to have at least six of these uh, in my shooting range. So if any of you have these that you're looking to get rid of, go right ahead and send them my way. They shall be used. A great deal. Now if we look at the blaster itself, um, it is really quite nifty. They didn't uh, give it a, a ridiculously unnecessarily long barrel, which I approve. The, the rounds actually load just right there in the front, so that is nice. The plunger system is probably right here, and this is just uh, the prime, so it isn't like behind it like or offset or weird like you, you often see. You can actually see the spring in there. You can see the magazine, that's also pretty cool. Uh, it does come with a bipod that uh, you clip on. It doesn't slide on the rail, you, you slide it on sideways and it's got a, a latching mechanism. Uh, it has a bipod that flips down obviously and then uh, has extendable feet, which is cool. That is pretty nifty. They're not, as near as I can tell, spring loaded. Uh, and then it has the foot in the back to allow you to uh, rest it and be very stationary and all of that. And this one is reverse spring loaded, which is nifty. Safety mechanism. And then this one is bolt action, which is of course the part that annoys me because it is decidedly not particularly left hand friendly. Now, because Nerf blasters are light, it is entirely possible for you to simply let go with your right hand and prime it with your left but they're obviously generally designed for you to prime with your trigger hand. So you continue to support it with your off hand and then prime it with your, your trigger hand. And while you can prime overhand, it's awkward and I don't like it. So that's my one complaint about the ergonomics of this. I love the bolt action mechanism. Um, it, just, it, it gives that very distinct uh, sniper feel, I think, having a bolt action mechanism. Uh, obviously, pump action is more efficient because you don't have to let go of the blaster to do it, but I, I just think it's a neat idea, so, uh, and, and makes it a little bit more unique. So, uh, let's get this thing through the chronograph and out to the range and get some numbers and, uh, test that claim of accuracy and, uh, then we'll try throwing K26 in it and see if it makes it better or worse. All right, let's see if we're getting those 90 FPS that they are claiming. Double shot for 66, so that's not really correct. 94. 95. 95. 94. 90. 94. 92. Yeah, yeah, we're getting, the, we're getting the 100, plus if you double shot, you'll get 60, which isn't bad, so 
Neat. Let's go check the accuracy. All right, well, as this has a bipod, I figured I'd set up a table and shoot properly. Uh, we're going for accuracy because that is one of the claims on the box. So we're going to be shooting at the 25-foot target first, and hopefully we will be able to hit something. That is route. Uh, Fifty percent on that small of a target, I believe. That's not bad. I think I got four in a row. So, all right, let's gather up the ammunition and try for that farther target. All right, ammo's been recovered. We're aiming for the farther target, which is at 50 feet, and we'll see if we can't make it ring. complete no hits but several of them were within a couple of inches so that's that's not bad honestly for stock rival being able to almost hit something at 50 feet well that's all well and good but of course we want to know if we can take the k26 now i thought i filmed myself unscrewing it but i don't think i'm i, I think it might have failed so it's already done um now annoyingly there is one stripped out screw back here in the back so I can't get it all the way open, but even without that, it is very obvious to see that this is just another Kronos reshell, really. The only difference is the whole priming mechanism. But other than that, it looks like it's got basically the same other internals, though getting to all of that could be the tricky bit okay all right so there we go that just comes right off and this one it'll actually come out oh they patted the plunger head that's nice of them let's take a look at our main spring it's smaller it is smaller than the one that came out of the mercury it is both a little bit shorter. And one less coil. And I, I think uh, it, it might even be a slightly smaller diameter. That is interesting. I wouldn't have expected this one to have a lesser spring. But we're going to go with the K26. I'm going to assume it's going to have the same problem, so we're going to put the same number of coils as we did in the other one, which was 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It will fit on the plunger. That's not surprising. Will it catch? No. No. Which, given that it has a smaller spring, I suppose isn't entirely surprising, or shouldn't be entirely surprising. Alright, well, we'll cut a coil off. We ended up down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 coils. But, at least it'll catch. That's what's important. Now let's see if we can get this thing back together. I'm about to get the shell closed. Let's uh, 
get it fully buttoned up. But first, a word from our sponsor, Sticky. You heard the man. Well, if you try hard enough, there we go. Now it catches. Just had to get everything worked out, I think. All right, let's let's get the numbers. All right, let's get some chronograph numbers. I'm gonna shoot five through it, get some numbers. 123. 120. 120. 117. 122. So there is an improvement, not as much as we saw with the Mercury, but that's not surprising because this one only has 12 coils to the Mercury's 14. So, yeah, it's about five FPS per coil. Neat, to the range. Let's see if the accuracy has gone up or down. All right, now we're gonna test the accuracy with K26. First at 25 feet and then at 50. Almost caught it. Okay, well I got a couple vague hits. The first one, or the second one, one of them. There are a few hits. Uh, but it is a, an absolute beast to prime now. It's, it's just not a pleasant blaster to operate anymore. Uh, I'm gonna try to gather up the ammunition. They were bouncing all over the place. And we'll try at uh, the 50 foot and uh, we'll see. I was able to recover eight of the 10 rounds. Whoever's idea it was to make rival rounds grass green is uh, overdue for a good scroting, I believe. All right, we're gonna go for the 50 foot target and hopefully I get any of these rounds back. Oh, only shot so far that was even close. Oh. As we've seen in the past, increasing the FPS on rival tends to uh, reduce the accuracy at the long range. The close one wasn't bad. And the increased velocity has advantages, but the long range, uh, they were all over the place. I had two that were near and the rest were just, whew. let's go see if I can find any of that ammunition. Well, unsurprisingly, that is also a yes. We also got a decent FPS increase. We went from the 90s to the 120s, so about a 33% increase. Still significant. Um, again, uh, accuracy suffered. Uh, ex especially at the longer range. The close range wasn't too bad because it, because of the increased FPS, it doesn't have time for the hop-up to really kick in and have an effect. But again, cutting down the hop-up might, uh, might help the accuracy, but would probably affect your range uh, since you wouldn't have that Magnus effect to keep the ball going. Uh, but it might, it might fly straighter as a result. So you, I will definitely need to experiment with that. The prime on this one is just unpleasant at this point. Uh, in order to get it to actually get far enough back to catch, you have to kind of contort your arm, and it, even after a couple of primes, it was hurting my elbow, not from strain of the, the weight, but from the angle that you had to do it at. 
Uh, and it was a really fun, comfortable blaster before. So this one I will probably downgrade uh, back to its original performance because 90 isn't bad and I really liked the form factor. Uh, I would like to paint this up in x strike colors. I'm wondering how this green is going to take that. I'll probably just prime it all, of course, in black and then and do the orange over it. And uh, there's plenty of room in the blaster. Like this whole back end is, of course, empty. And there's plenty of empty space in here if you wanted to put in a, a battery pack uh, and then have a switch mounted here somewhere that powered LEDs. Uh, this, this, again, has that very spacey feel to it, I think, that I really, really like. And uh, you, there's plenty of room to, to put LEDs in here, especially if you tinted the clear sections. Definitely something for um, for the love of Nerf to look into, since tinting blasters is his thing. Uh, I wouldn't mind having this tinted in orange and then lit up and have, you know, the X-Strike uh, reverse gear up color scheme or something. So, you know, do all of this in black. There's, there's plenty of orange here and here, so I might actually do this one. Um, you know, do like this orange and then this lower portion. Who knows? Um, I really, really like this blaster, but I definitely am going to downgrade that spring because that just makes it so unpleasant, especially being uh, left-handed. It makes it very awkward and uncomfortable to prime. But um, if taking out the hop-up made it more accurate, having that increased velocity would make it harder to dodge. So there, there's give and take. So there you have it. Let's recap. All right, for those of you just tuning in or who just skipped to the end to see the results, that was a yes for the Nerf Rival Edge Mercury. And that was also a yes for the Nerf Rival Edge Jupiter. Both of them are able to take a K26. However, because of the offset prime that both of them have, it makes for a somewhat uncomfortable prime, especially this one. This one is just an unpleasant blaster to operate with a K26 in it. This one isn't bad. And this one, it would be very easy to make it rear prime. Um, either by having something that hooks onto the, the top rail and slides back, or just having something that's bolted onto both sides and slides back. This one could be easily made rear prime, and then it would be just like a Kronos as far as how easily it primes. Uh, it had the, the considerably greater increase. This one was up to 130 from 90. This one was up to 120 from 90. Uh, and this one, the offset prime just becomes basically unmanageable and made the blasters extremely unpleasant. Both of them, the accuracy suffered greatly, especially at the longer ranges. At 120, uh, 25 feet, um, the speed of the round is such that it would make it very, very hard to dodge at that range. But anything past that, you're very unlikely to hit anything. So uh, that is, of course, due to the hop-up. The hop-up gets increased, and these things were specifically engineered for this much hop-up at this FPS, and that'll get you... The accuracy, when you increase the accuracy, it, it really kind of destroys all of that. So you would need to experiment with your hop-up. Either remove it entirely, which is probably going to reduce your range, but would probably increase accuracy, or just reduce it. and Try to get it down to where it needs to be to be able to fly straight again. So, yeah, I love the, the, the shape of both of these. They're very spacey. Um, very, you know, ray gun look. They're, they're svelte, and I really, really like that. And so I definitely want to paint them up. Um, there's a really good chance that I'm going to put their original springs back in just because I really enjoyed them on their stock weights, and the heavier weight is just makes them not nearly as much fun to, to plink with. So there you have it. That is a yes for both of the current Rival Edge blasters. If you have recommendations for what you would like to see next month, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Um, the... The new Mega one, that is, of course, on the list. There are also a whole bunch of off-brand rival-type blasters that I'm also planning on looking into. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching.